Welcome back for part two. Part two. Part two. Part two. We're doing the other side and also going to give you a little bit more information on the final finishing touches of the uh, clean up, the post winter trip clean up. Part one was uh, popular. So I thought, why not? It's free to view. So I'm going to go through a few other little things on the car. And we're going to finish this off. Then I'm going to do a features talk through. It's a bit of a bonus to the cleaning video because we don't want a full video on detailing just yet. Maybe one day I'll do a full comprehensive one. This was just to show you that we got it clean after that uh, grueling winter trip. If you've not seen the winter trip, click click the link at the end of this video. There'll be a little link to it. And you'll see what I mean about how the car got a bit of a beating and how we have to get it back in here to... Uh, get it back and get the salt off and get it all clean so this video is all part of that you join me as we do this and then later on when it's done I'm going to talk you through as many features on the car in one video clip as I can because let's just go down a little bit uh, because what am I trying to say five four three seconds to answer two one I'm trying to say that the features were spread out over 40 episodes. Well, perhaps they were compressed towards the end in the last 10 or 20 episodes. Maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, because... No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, I was doing electronics. Well, was it starting around episode 15 when the electronics kicked in? You'll see if you browse back through the Project Ruby series of 40 videos that there are some electronic features on the car some you'll have just seen on the winter trip and you'll be getting fed up with me going on about them others we may have forgotten about little touches here and there i'm going to take us through a full guided tour of this car after it's cleaned and polished this evening we're fresh back from the gym we've warmed up and then i've come into the garage and warmed up yet again it is cold one tonight february 13. um so why not? Seeing that. Ruby's our Valentine tonight. Only tonight. We'll clean her up. Let's go. So come on in. Let's go. Let's have a look. It's a little rest down here. Uh, okay. Different side of the car. First trick I did, let me reach across. I'm on the tripod up there. These Wonder wipes. Sounds a bit cheesy, doesn't it? Sounds a bit corny. What's that? Wonder wipes. Sound cheap and horrible. Well, they get silicon off. They get bugs off. And they get road tar off. And they're handy to have around also. Because intended to clean your hands with. But this road tar situation down here, the lower, just, it's been washed down by the way, warm soapy water and the, uh, the anti salting stuff, which I haven't got the box, but I poured it into the bucket. And I think the reason, oh no, there it is. I've got it. It's, the label's not on it, but this is a solution which kills off salt. It's very, very mild. A very, very mild desalter. Now, vinegar also gets salt off, but that was, that was for uh, marine use, like a marine grade. Wash down stuff, they use it in boat yards. I got it from the boat yard just up the road. Okay, that went on very lightly into the warm uh, warm water. I've got a hot water tap on just by the boiler outside, that's handy. So, bucket under, hot water tap on, got myself some nice hot water on tap. So, once that was done, this was washed down, I could then bring it into the garage to clean the garage floor first, so we had a nice environment to work with. Switch the heated floor on and you're off, you're good to go. Found the radio station, Manx Radio, I'm on AM now, got an AM radio going, digital, yeah, for adverts. Well, no, digital's good, you can get Radio 6. Anyway, I was talking about bugs, the bugs, 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 that's more Lancashire coming in, and down here, and that takes off the tar, when I say tar, tar and bug remover, Bugs at the front, tiles at the bottom. Straight away, it's getting the last bits of grease and grime just off here. 
quite like in the way that it does a final clean before our polish goes on. Also, if you look at your mirrors, you'll see the salt stains on the chrome, and these also get those off. This had sort of that difficulty, I and mean, you can auto sell it as well, but these have already been auto sold, but they've just got that salt layer on them, and that takes it off too. Obviously, I just sort of have to buff them as well, but what I'm saying is, Wonder Wipes have got their place, okay? We don't need them now to have gone round it all. What we're going to do next is very light on the G3 uh, buffing compound, just to take any swirls out and stuff that might have been missed when it was initially mopped. I don't think they were, but we'll very lightly go over the panels. Then we go Maguire's Ultimate Wax, and then Maguire's Quick Wax. Changing cloths, changing our uh, microfibers, and we're off. So, a little break for you while I get on with this. Go and have a look at some Sally James. Late 70s, 80s photos. Sally James does was. Ask about her all day. I think she's uh, the reason why we like covering things in creams like this. Sally James, it's your fault. Oh, right, I better get on with this. I'm going down to eye level so I can see a different angle. I'm going down to eye level now. You can see. <laughs> now I know, hold on. I know, right, that uh, there's grime on here because when you're running the cloth across it, you can hear like a gritty noise. And when you put the G3 on, it goes smooth. And you don't hear that gritty noise no more. So there is a sort of layer of grime on there which the normal detergents can't get off. So I'm just taking that off. And I can hear the scratchy noise goes away. Sorry if this ain't very technical. And the paint guys who know their stuff will know whether there's anything I can do to improve this technique, okay? I'm not saying that I'm doing it right, but at the moment when I'm looking now from this angle, I'll go up and look at another angle as well. There's, there's no swirls there and it's looking like glass. I can see some imperfections, but once you go around there like that, they go, I can see the paint. It's very thick paint on this, a very deep, thick paint on the ruby. Nice finish though. I've done a good job putting the paint on. So that's now getting that Mr. Sheen feel. I'm them on the floor because of Sally. Sally James. This was Sally James. I think it's responsible for everyone's craziness. Have you ever watched that show? It's, it's mad. People chucking buckets. Oh no, I'm not allowed to mention that. That song. You've just got it out of your head now, it's back. Do you want to sing along to the Bucket of Water song? What's with uh, these massive uploads as well? Some channels that are really popular. Mine's okay, but it's not like mega busy. Thanks uh, though for everyone who's helping it get better. But like, just a clip of why shouldn't I just do it? Just a, this is what I did, I cleaned my car today. I mean, it's crazy how YouTube works. You'd think that people just want like an hour long feature film. And some do, but some want them quick hits. So, just give you a few quick hits. Okay, I've looked down here, guys. Got some grime going on. See all that tar on that sill? Loads of it. Whilst the sill is shiny, it's far from clean. We've got to get under there, and it's all purpose time, just on the edge. And then our bug removing wipes. Then we go in with G3, then we go and polish. But look at all them black, little black smart spots. Hold on. Look. No, 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 no. Let's get them removed. I'll update you in a sec. We're going to get them off. A little bit of APC coming up. Okay, our Maguire's Marine, our Marine away. Marine wash solutions in there, the desalt in one, 
with uh, APC, so all purpose cleaner, sorry I'm using the abbreviations, APC underneath there, gone with a, a de super duper detailing brush, taking off that gunge just underneath there and also going inboard a little bit onto the inboard part of the chassis before we finally finish it off on the ramps. This side's not had its wheels off so we'll be doing that as well and under the wheel arch tonight so wheels off as well on this cleaning session that door's now done look at that finish and it's not waxed yet that's just the polish for the g3 and then we've got to double wax that so say that door's not done <laughs> it's not done the door's not, door's done it's not done edge of this wing just got some um polish g3 bleeding across as the cloth's gone so we'll just re-wax that bit and work our way to that back door there getting ready to go but first i'm going to take you underneath the car with the torch and we're going to go and uh, get this and just get that gunk off from underneath now it's going to drip and land on the floor but we have a mop over there so as we go along we'll clean with that mop drop them back it'll dry quick because the floor's heated so we get the mop ready as well go under clean and mop then when that, all that's done I take it to the ramps garage ramps and then we finish off the transmission tunnel and further inboard but I don't want to go under there with axle stands that's going to drip backwards onto me I'll just go inboard where I can stick my head underneath okay we'll do that now right guys what we got okay you see that the APC is starting to break down the dirt there look and we're getting the yellow back and we're going to be looking out for any stone chips and stuff. Now this is all Gravitex under here, which is easy to over repair. You can get your yellow paint, which I've got still a litre worth of the paint left. I've decanted some into a small container. We've got a small paintbrush, a modelling brush. We go over and we touch in any stone chips that have hit the Gravitex. So that we get a uniform yellow. There may be nothing, there may be no damage. Uh, what we're up to now, I don't know if we're up to 2,000 miles yet of this of road use. Anyway, I'll check the mileometer, it'll tell me. I think it's 1500, isn't it? I don't know what it is, but we'll go under because the speedo was disconnected for a while as well, so it's going to be a bit tricky. Anyway, it's had some winter use. And as said again on the film, it's only a one off. But you still get a, you still get a lot of muck in the summer shows, believe me, off Swampy. I know how much dirt comes in and out of the car, even just at shows. And, it rained for at least three quarters of last season so you get mud underneath it just gets just as mucky obviously not as corrosive our name of the game is desalting okay and also inspection i mean i was going to be under here anyway the fact that i'm going and de salting it <laughs> i'd be under anyway so i'm not not really that bothered uh damp cloth now underneath here we go Guys, I'm happy. Guys, I'm happy under here. I've got my cloth. And I'm... You see, at this angle, you get a different viewpoint, obviously. It'll be a different angle otherwise. But, I'm just giving it the, uh, the soapy solution now. And I'm going to take you under and show you how good it's looking under here. With that Gravitex that we did in the early videos, tune in if you've not seen them. The Gravitex is there, and we now it now comes into its own. It has all the um, them awful potholes of bouncing stones up. It's just jumping off the Gravitex and not leaving any marks. You can do a nice paint finish under your car, which I do like the look of, but you always worry that it's not going to withstand the uh, the harshness there. So looking underneath. We are looking good. Right, with our Sealy light, rechargeable USB, rechargeable light, can't live without. We're going to take you under the car. I've just given that a clean and a wipe down. Let's have a look, see what you think. I think it's nice, see if you agree. We've just wiped that now and finished off. Now look how it survived its grueling trip. Oh yeah! No problem. No damage. Look. Remember when we put them bungs in? Go back on the other videos if you don't remember. We didn't see them. So Gravitex then doing its job and letting the uh, the debris bounce off it as opposed to having it underpainted like a car finish. That's why I liked it. 
because I was building it to use it. Maybe if you're not building to use and you're just gonna sort of just show the car, that's fine. Then go for your nice, uh, go for your nice paint finish. But I wanted something that could take the take the stick and look. We're quids in. We're clean. So it's job done there, and the edge of the sills too. Look if you look down. Lovely. You see some gunge coming out. That's just the wax oil. But we are. We are good. We are really good. I can't see any damage. And it just the dirt just wipes off. Okay. You happy? I am. Oh ho, ho, yeah. I like it. I'm happy. I do like it because I, I was thinking, I hope I haven't damaged anything. I'm back. I'm just as good as, as when it was painted. Oh yeah. Okay, moving along and just waxing now the door shuts, same as we did on the other side, exactly the same. We find that the door shuts are in superb order as you'd expect, it's not done anything to the car. But as I say, we're on that inspection, aren't we? We're looking, we're searching, we're looking to find any clues, any evidence, and we're lovely there. Those original Ford sills that we fitted looking nice on the lines. Oh yes. So we're good there, we're good there. We've put some wax on the door shut so we just treat those nicely now. Down we go, making sure there's no grime or anything in there, which there's not. Hopefully you can see that on your screens at home, ladies and gentlemen, that we've got a lovely shine. As you'd expect. But we're cleaning the car, we've gone underneath. We're lovely under there, so that door's done. We can close that door. That's done and a nice satisfying clunk. Then this sill here, we've just wiped that down. You'll see our friendly tar again. So we get a wonder wipe on the tar. We've just gently, hold on, I've got a grip the wonder wipe to pull. We've gently, there we go. It took a bit of trick in to grab it with my teeth. I've gently wiped it down. Now I'm gonna go for them bugs. There's. I keep calling them bugs, if it's the tar, there's one, see look, watch, very gently just let it work it, there's one, they sound like grits, if you can listen, just about hear it, listen, how it drags on the cloth, it'll slowly go, you can hear they make like a speckly sound, you can't have no such word as speckly sound, they do, they make a speckly sound. And that's just simply rotor coming up. There's some actual grit. Careful with that. Around the Ford badge. I'm just feeling it with my fingers and not putting any pressure on. Guys, being bad. Continue on with the uh, cleaning video. Guess who was going to give you a big old walk around of the car? Once we'd cleaned it, well that, that was going to be me. So we're also going to give you some a features rundown on the car. That was going to be me. But guess what? Just when I cleaned it all, Maguire's it, waxed it, polished it, caressed it, cherished it, corseted it. Don't you love that word, corset? Corseted. I, 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 some, I had an idea to go out and do a road trip. Weather was given sunshine. We got rain and we got mud, but we didn't have salt this time. So, what we're going to do is start again, okay? Don't worry about it though, because it's going to come up clean. Now, this is how it comes in after a 300 mile round trip, North Wales coastline this time. Look how you get these streaks on the bonnet there. The camera can pick those up. The sort of aerodynamic streaks. No white deposits this time, showing me there weren't as much sold out so just the general motorway grime okay so that's where we're up to so i'm gonna we had loads of wax on it before it went out so we're gonna see in the bucket now we've got the maguire's i'm not gonna hear that word a lot you're gonna hate me for it this goes for the the wash wax okay 
So we're going to put that on. You get the um, hologram sticker to know it's not a fake. So we go with that first. What we do, I've got a tile floor, so I'm not too bad, but it's going to pool on the floor, but we mop up as we go. This side first again and right the way around. I'll go a bit quicker on filming this time and not in real time will be ages but on filming i'll clip ahead because you've already seen a lot of this already done so a quick back to where i was before i stopped filming apologies for that but guess what it comes at a great payoff because we got ourselves a little road trip movie which i know you guys like i'll be getting a gopro soon for the uh, screen so you get better audio so i've limited the on dash cam audio for you I tried to include uh, my handheld as the audio source, but we went a little screaming around the North Wales coastline um, because there was a couple of items I wanted to take you to and show. And there's loads more after that, but these were just a few on the way to a little uh, coastal trip up to Carnarvon Castle is what we were, we were doing. Okay, so clean up. The road trip film is uploaded somewhere up here. There's a little square box. There's a preview of it. So have a look at that when you're done. Okay, carrying on with this now. And hello. Thanks for the tips as well. The thumbs up on the on the cleaning video part one. This is part two. Someone, uh, quite a few people, suggested me different products to use. I really appreciate that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be very polite. Go round and uh, do a YouTube um, thank you on everyone that comes in on the comments. I'm going to try and go through you all. Uh, now you'll see on the next upload, it's a Q&A that's going down. I'll put a separate video up for the Q&A, so bang in as many questions as you want. Me and Andy, Andy the photographer who did the photography sessions for the promo cards for Ruby, he's going to be answering, asking the questions, but you're going to be asking the questions. Sorry, he's asking the questions that you put forward. Okay, so this is coming off dead easy. All I've done, I'm just with the, the soapy warm water this, by the way. And then I've just gone from the top, suggest anything that might be better, and brought everything down. And that's all I've done. Now, I've sort of dabbed off, but everything's just falling off. So, nothing's stuck to it. I don't know if you can see that, but that 300 mile trip has just left. Because of, because of the wax that was already on, there was so much wax on there, it makes this job 10 times easier when you get here. So I'm just feeling it, and that's good. So that wing took a minute to do. Um, it's not complete, but a minute to clean anyway. And then we'll go back and uh, we'll re-wax. Definitely be re-waxing it. I'm just making sure that the road dirt's off. I'll do the wheel next and panel at a time. Do the wheel next, panel at a time, move all the way around. You've already seen all this. We'll go fast. The next thing you see will be all the panels washed down and back to where I was before one of my naughty road trip. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, I'm now drying off. For my drying off cloth, I've gone yellow. All washed down that side. You could always put a towel down as well when you're uh, using the wet uh, soapy water. It just collects the drips. If you're not on a waterproof floor, or indeed if you are, you want to make life easier. A couple of towels will last a long way. The idea is you won't be having too much soapy water running off the car. So let's have a, a get a, a bit close and then I'll jump just very slowly drying off. And my hand is hardly putting any pressure. It's, I'm all just pulling the cloth along. Here's a good one for you. Quickest way to learn or what's a good way to learn? Provided it's not too costly make the odd mistake let someone constructive help you correct you and you'll remember it a lot more of course it's best to not make the mistake in the first place but if you're trying to improve your skills okay so you have a go and then the great people on youtube that's you lot who's watching all of you because the uh, the silly comments don't get posted i just just delete them so all those great comments that come in the rest don't bother me they lodge in my mind an example of it would be there's a couple of ones I'll never forget uh, the term for the span for a swan neck spanner that was taught to me on YouTube I don't think I called them swan necks I called them dog leg spanners I always call them swans now 
Also with nuts and bolts, it ain't a 13mm bolt if it's got a 13 head on it. That's another one I don't forget. And then again with polishing, there's some uh, good comments coming on that. I'll, I'll acknowledge you next time round. Uh, there's been loads of things off YouTube that you guys have shown me what to do. That's what I like about it. So I don't pretend to know it. I just like sharing what I learn as I go along, like we did with the cruise control and everything else on the car. Because we're not experts, we're just we're just learning, we're just enthusiasts. So that's good, that's a good thing. I like that very much. It makes me very happy indeed. When I'm cleaning this as well, at the moment drying, just gently drying off, um, I'll make notes of any damages, stone chips particularly, or scratches where you're getting in and out of the car or whatever. And then I'll keep a log of mileage versus um, chips, marks, imperfections in the paint that are induced by using the car so that I'll get a rough idea of damage per mile. It sounds a bit crazy, but I'm intending to use the cars like you would if you bought them out of the showroom and, and be a person in the 70s using their car. That's why I like the motorways and I want to be that sales rep on the motorway or whatever or the uh, the holiday to Cornwall with the luggage in the boot, that kind of thing. That appeals to me, living the, the lifestyle, not the lifestyle, but the going through the motions though the car is the only you know there isn't another car this is the car and you're using it like you would in the 70s so all the things that have been happening to it is what would have happened in the 70s instead of just hiding it in the garage till the show season comes up I mean yeah okay I'll be a bit concerning with the weather like I said but on the whole it ain't just uh, a show car it's a daily car okay not daily daily but a leisure car for every day that's not raining or icy so it doesn't have to be a show um, well I'll go to shows as well so we'll keep a log of any damages and we can see what you can expect to get out of a car at given speeds mileages and road conditions and then when I do the next resto on the two door we can expect there may be areas which we can say, well, you should always stone chip the front, for example, uh, if you're going to use it high mileage, because the front balance may be stone chipped. I don't know if it is. Let's go and have a look. I've not even looked at it. So 2,000 miles now on the front lower balance. Normally stone chipped on all my other cars. Um, none on this. Uh, no stone chip on this. It was going because it's actually a better finish when it's not stone chipped. But, at the expense of what damage we get now, can we see our first impact? What do we have by the the V there? As the reg plate, yep, the reg plates took a hit. Okay, here we go. Look. The reg plates took a hit, look. Wow. It's, it looks like that's in to the actual white, that's a stone chip full on impact, see? Now this is what I'm talking about. That's fine, I can live with that, get another edge plate. Don't really want to, touch it up with white. What we'll do, we monitor that, so we'll make a note of that impact point. We can use, I'll have to be the right type of paint for this. I'm going to think about what to use on that, a body touch up pen, one of those little pencil pens. Um, we'll get something right, and then very carefully, you don't want to look like a blob, so you need to get that out. I'm going to think of a way of doing that. So there's one. Nothing else on the plate. So that, if that had hit the valance, I'm sure it would have bounced it and chipped it. Can't see any. In other words, it's not peppered, as it shouldn't be. But the thing is, with the roads at the moment, they're not like they were when I was uh, around uh, first driving. Even even in the 90s, late 80s, uh, was when I was up and driving first experience on the roads in the late 80s but throughout the 90s and the 2000s the noughties there was nowhere near as many potholes of what as what we've got now I would have noticed it and I was wondering I wonder if it is um, something to do with you being maybe you get more cantankerous as you get older maybe you get more awkward maybe you observe more as you get older maybe I'm noticing the potholes whereas They've always been there, but I don't think that's the case. I really believe that the roads are knackered 
in Lancashire they are knackered you've got to really dodge the car around it so you're talking about wrecking your suspension and everything you know so I don't think it's an age thing I think it genuinely is the roads are knackered so what happens with the potholes they'll, they'll the car in front kicks the stone back at you so you could even at low speeds you can get big I've seen them fly up my Mondeo took a hit off one gravel and grit all over the roads with no grit signs out you normally when you resurface the road you get that grit one and you either don't go down it if you're classic car or you you go a lot slower and you hope that the car's not going to speed past you and flick the stones at you but the potholes change that makes the roads virtually unusable in some places I've been going so those stone chips can be part of uh, the wear and tear of the car and there's no way around that that's going to apply to all of you guys in all of your cars stone chips are out there now more than ever because of the pothole kicking the broken pieces of asphalt and and um, hardcore and substrate onto the tires which then flick back at you so it's going to be a risk I'm going to have to take of course and, and or, or we all are because I can't see how they're going to fix the roads in any short time scale anyway front valance hasn't took any it's not turned into sandpaper so that's good so I'm monitoring this because it's fresh paint so it's a great time to just see exactly what's going on and I hope that I don't dwell too much on the cleaning video part two and I can try and keep it interesting so off that now the wheels next uh, the super duper brush which I've shown you before very quickly super duper that's called it my I call it the Andy brush not handy Andy because Andy introduced me to this and like I said you just go in and twizz it twizzle it round like a twizzler stick okay I'm gonna do that next I hope you two can pick up the station in fact I hope you can hear this garbage that's playing in the background I just can't get the station I just I really struggle radio 6 goes all a bit spooky and far out this time of night and then um, Radio Lancashire, well that was football yesterday, and the football, oh, <laughs> Sunday football, okay I'm sorry if you're a footy fan, I can understand the passion of supporting football, I love the World Cup, um, and don't support a team, but, I mean England, <laughs> of course for the World Cup, but I mean, a home team, a local team, whatever they're called, but football on the radio, Radio Lancashire, uh, normally quite good but then it did the football <laughs> it's not too bad the live commentary it's the post-match commentary I can't stand well we've got to create lots of ch we didn't create enough chances in the box and we had plenty of players up front but they didn't create enough chances and well, I think it's just completely it's like goes round in circles the talk the foot the footy talk round and round and round and round and round we didn't create enough chances we didn't create enough well, what we need, we need to create more chances i think what happened is we didn't really create enough. we need to put more more boots on the ground we need to put more really basically we need more goals to win the game was really we need we needed more goals i thought we played really well today and uh, the manager was was okay but we needed to create more chances and put more more balls in the net more balls in the net that's what we needed to do and then create those chances uh, we just didn't create enough chances today and um, and um, yeah and then this player came on and uh, well um, you know I think they paid a lot of money for him and he, uh, he's, he's, he's really moved up through the ranks and proved, he's proved himself today and uh, I'm thinking that you know he, he, he did create a lot of chances and, and uh, you know what I mean Take a, mul take a mucky wheel, grab a scrubbing brush. Take a mucky wheel and grab your scrubbing brush. So, uh, hi, we carry on cleaning like just getting that dirt out from back at nuts there. And we go around, get the horse shit off, and a bit more horse shit there. Smashing that gravely. Hi. It says effects of middling. Smashing. And we go around like that and uh, people say oh, I'll stand the word you, you say it like, you know. That, uh, talking the old uh, 
back on that injectors on tractor, Jack. It's uh, it's not going. It's a good one. I'm stuck in the middle of the field. You know, crops are going to fail. It's bloody awful. Like. It's uh, what's, what's wrong with it, Jack? Well, it's getting down to the pub, lad. Like. I can't, lad. Like. The injectors are bugging. The injectors are bugging, lad. Like. What I like to do when I'm doing this, turn the mobile off. Be arsed with it. Be arsed with mobile phones. Complete invasion of your privacy. Total abuse of your privacy. Especially text messages. Forget iPhones. Don't use them. Why the hell do I want to? Dare it a load of applications all day. I do that when I get onto my computer. And that's computer time, my time, computer time. I take that thing round with you all day long, staring at that crap. Text tennis this, texting that, what's you had for your dinner, this, what you had for your dinner, that. Distracting me. Remember the days when there were no phones? Hey, days when there were no mobile phones. Polishing a wheel. And bleeding radiators. Well, mobile phones. The people I know that are really ahead of the game, they've just got basic phones and they've realised that they've just never made that step across to those touchy typey things. Okay, fair enough, there'd be no YouTube view, so I can't have it always. I know that, but for me, no thanks. And this is where it does catch it. Look at them sill steps. This is where I'm going to be mega careful. Again, it's on the other clip. I do apologise if I've repeated myself, but I'm just concerned I might miss something and people would say, no, oh, you should have covered how to do that. I probably have. This is not good. That's grit. Look. So, we've got to get that off that sill without dragging it. And that's the technique. I don't know what I'm going to do. Last time I dabbed it. Maybe I'll do that again. Be real careful now on the sills. Guys, I'm going for the mega water technique. Bring that cloth on, saturate it and squeeze it. And try and drag it back so that the dirt's floating on a little film of water. And it just trails off. It's a bit risky. But I can't think of anything. That was nasty grit under there. And again under the door. Okay, I think I've got that. I'll dry it back. Just press that cloth in. Move it along and press it in. That's what I'm doing for that. The paint's probably tough enough to take it, but I don't want to put like loads of little mini scratches in this. That's okay, we got that. Off we go. Just a damp cloth between the door shut, the front there, and that hinge, and then dry down. Just so you've got your door shuts looking nice as well. Down we go, just like that. This door shut wasn't affected just need a little wipe down so we know that the road dirt doesn't really get in there as much as anywhere else and you door. all this housewife music sounds the same bugger off something else come on no oh, i don't know okay this is the business end of the dirt here you go, now this is what really stacks up dead quick because of the vacuum at the back of the car, of course, drawing it all up, the drag factor, whatever it is. So, the boot panel's no problem, just glides off there, our back valance there, back of pleak, bumper, and lower valance we'd be careful with now. So it's uh, the handy brush out, and I'll go in just like this with the applique, with the soapy water, let that dribble down. All the way along there so a wash down at the back then a dry down move along this side where we left off last time that's where i left you before i had extended this clip down that side we'll go and then finish off by going underneath the wheels off underneath we've done some of the floor earlier on we'll just go over the floor again because well, in fact we can see how that floor held up comparing them clips that you've already seen now under the floor if i edit this in the right order I was, where I left off was I was leaning upside down while well, the camera was pointing, I was like lying on my back and I was down on the floor there, okay? So we'll see how, see how that's held out. I'm not going to put any more on now, you know the technique, so we just do it all over the car. 
glass clean as seen before on the uh, early eclipse glass cleaner look for any damage make a note of any damage with the mileage on keep it in the log book we're also doing that with the fuel as well just to keep track on the fuel economy and then we're wrapping it I'm gonna pan back and show you the finish then we'll do the features rundown which is what you've been all asking about the features rundown you know I've been ramming the crews down your throat sorry about that but um, we shall do any features which I might not have mentioned there's, there's high powered LED lamps in here you might want to know how, how they work and how you might want to fit them on your car things to watch out for with your high powered lamps uh, the pitfalls of the eBay ones I never covered that on any of the resto videos it's something special a um, couple of other things electronic things which I'll remember as I go along I'll walk round the car and do it and I'll promise to get you out of here and we'll move on to something else then I can get editing that uh, road trip clip okay I'm gonna clean the whole back of this I'm not gonna put any more cleaning tips on unless I come up with something I've not thought about let's get the hell out of here I'm waffling let's move just a damp cloth again on the, on the vinyl roof and there's a lot of dirt on the vinyl roof you could see where I put the cloth obviously collects dirt so the vinyl roof's one thing as well we've got to do so I'm just not too wet there but damp enough just to get that muck off then rinse and go again then we'll put a, a nice vinyl black coating on there which I'll show you in the final stages of this okay let's see what we can do keep on going with that no problem quite enjoyable lovely stuff Okay, with the road dirt removed now, another warm, just clear, no soap in it now, with a chamois. So we wet and just chamois off very lightly, uh, very light, uh, clear, clear warm water and chamois cloth, just so we don't leave any streaks, and then we're on with the waxing. Mop floor there, you saw that, just to keep it clean, now we'll do one more. There'll be a little bit more water dripping down next, but it's best, you don't want to be slipping as you're doing that, so floor dries out quite quick because it's on heat uh, we're lucky in that respect but towel down if not get yourself a load of old towels you even rewash them and use them again there's my one I use at the end over there okay keep it on going for you blue for the glass blue for the glass it's not the best glass in the world I've got to say I've got a chip on this piece but it was only sun dim glass I could get my hands on blue for the glass and thanks to Oh, I'm going to have to go back, I'm really apologising, I'm not naming you, but you left me a comment. Wind the glass down, of course, and you don't get them lines at the top. Then wind up later and, and just continue. So, blue for the glass, uh, polish is on. We are quick waxed, we are base waxed, we're everything. So we went invisible glass, of course, there. We've gone, this is a good one, ultimate quick wax. Once you've got... A really good finish on the paint if you remember we we uh, G freed the car which is a micro uh, gritty type uh, paste which um, you use once the car's finally finished its drying process then you can start to wax I didn't want to wax straight away but I wanted this paint to be really cured all the solvents truly out of it so we're now where uh, we're really piling loads of wax on the car building it up so I'm finishing off with quick wax I've done the Meguiar's uh, which one was it? We've got the gel as well, don't forget. Liquid wax, ultimate liquid wax. We had that before, showing you that. And the tyre gel. Ultimate endurance tyre gel. Also a numbing cream for endurance. Really good stuff. So, let's just finish off. Uh, we'll gel the tyres. We've got a vinyl treatment for the roof as well. Then we're done. All the glass and we're out. Not too bad. Two and a half hours so far for that post 300 mile clean up looking nice ha 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 tyre gel on and I walk around looking very nice indeed all sill steps all the wax layers on all our sill steps around this side all our door shuts cleaned all done and ready to go just the vinyl roof this time auto glim vinyl and rubber care applied to the cloth first then wipe it on circular motions onto the vinyl roof we go we don't spray directly on whoops ha <laughs> weren't meant to happen whoops okay we're not meant to spray directly on because it'll go all over your cleaned glass which is now all nicely cleaned so car coming to an end 
and back to where we were. Forgot to mention, I don't. I run two grills. You might see another grill just on top of the jukebox there. That's a new old stock grill that goes on for show days. So we do have a little bit of trailer queen this in us. I don't want to uh, stone blast that simply because of the grill problem we had. We talked about that grill problem. The video had to disappear. Didn't want to risk any legal problems, but we'll we'll make a video that is legal. And I'll tell you all about that chrome plating problem that we had. I'm sorry that the video had to disappear, but uh, my, my lawyers are on to it. So we're just working it, a project through at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah, so a grill's on. That one needs a little bit of TLC, to be fair. It's a good grill. The Noopster got it me, a really nice grill. Just needs the black doing on it. Just needs the, the satin and a little buff up. Well, that's also a very good grill. So we have got two. Uh, so we're alright for grills now, Grill Saga, well, we haven't got the old one uh, replated, it came back by the way, we'll tell more about that, it came back just with nothing done and no refund, we'll talk about that another time, stress no refund, we'll talk about that another time, we're closing this section up, I know it was going to take you underneath but I've run out of time, battery's on the low thing but we're going to clean down one wheel and show you that, uh, underneath does look clean. When you saw me crawling under there, it's just going to be more of the same. Not notice any stone chips, scratches or marks. And the paint's nicely um, deep finish and a quite a thick paint. I like it. Uh, now I've had a chance to, to polish it. I've never properly gone to town polishing the car because I was letting the, the paint give it its maximum time to, uh, to cure and dry out. So now we're just layering on the polish. And car looking extremely nice. Let's try and get back for you pull back and lift my hands right up and try and get the camera into the corner of the roof so you can see that we're all safe and we're not going out now for the next show, I promise you that one, we're going to stash it up, set the temperature in the garage at about 15 degrees and we are nice, oh we've got to do the boot as well and the engine bay, bugger, I'll go and recharge it and I'll do that, sorry engine bay and boot you need to see, okay. Derek Williams is 50th consecutive start in the league for Blackburn Rovers. He is the only player to have played every game that Tony Mowbray has been in charge of in the league. Which is some good going in this day and age, especially when defenders can pick up bookings and niggles and whatever. Yeah, he's very consistent, isn't he? You know, he does his job and he, you know, he's not, he's not flash or anything like that. He's consistent, he knows what he's good at and that's what he does. Here's David Ray, the Rovers goalkeeper. To Okay, we're nearly done. Just finishing off under the front arch. I told you I'd get the wheel off and get under there. Cleaning up good so far. Torch on for you. Okay, bit of wishbone to clean up. Front wings and then in them trouble uh, rust spots down the bottom, the bottom of that wing there. So we're going to get it right in. A little jet of water help if it's really, really mucky. Suggest uh, uh, hosing it first. That's the one area that I would suggest because it's so difficult to get in to all the little tiny bits where the mud traps. This is the worst rock point on the car. Just this back um, back of this front wheel. That is the worst rock spot. So you've got to make sure you clean and oil that late. We'll be doing that later on. But we're all cleaned up there. So I'm going to finish this video because it's running over time. So I'll put the wheel back on once we've done this. Then take what you're on the car then we're good to go. A little bit of copper slip on the studs just to make life easy when you're taking your wheel nuts. Off and on, they go on really nicely and spin up quick on the star brace. Right, jack down the front. Okay, car is complete. I promise I'd show you the boot as well. There's our new old stock boot mat out. And into the boot we go. Didn't need much, just a wipe down. Very clean in the boot. That holds out well, as it should do. Little Ford packs there, we love them. So we're nearly done. Car's all done, engine bay. And then we're getting you out of here, okay? Hope you've enjoyed the cleaning video. Let's go around to the bay. Low down, grab the torch. Bay's cleaned up well. No problem in the bay. Just a simple case of wipe down. Gentle cleaning solution, mild soap again. Wipe down and wax. Little toothbrush in and out, little bits around the spark plug, stuff like that. Just get in with your detailing brushes and you're, uh, you're away. So we are good there. All done on this OCD clean. PC's OCD clean coming to an end. Hope you enjoyed. Car is wonderfully clean, wonderfully waxed. All looking brilliant. Wiped down on the interior, just a little bit of dust. 
very nice indeed hope you enjoyed and good night for this one thanks for the comments again we'll catch you soon on another film I went out for now from Cortina City on a OCD post trip clean up all looking nice 2,000 miles on the car now and still clean we're enjoying it we hope you are too we thanks for your views your comments subscriptions all the usual stuff we got there thanks very much we'll catch you soon over and out Cortina City good night Uh, it doesn't look stacked with goals. Obviously, going to miss Paul Gallagher's last pass and his set plays. And uh, yeah, set plays. I love that. Set plays. Set plays. Set pieces.